Well, uh, we'll, we'll begin, and, uh, and I just want to say thank you guys for, for being here and staying here. And, and, uh, and so, yes, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and, uh, and so I just thought I would say, uh, you know, well, there's many things that I'm thankful for, and, uh, and I'm, you know, my heart is just full of gratitude in general, but, um, but I am especially thankful for, um, for you guys as students, and, and for all of the students that couldn't be here today and maybe are tuning in on, uh, on YouTube here, I am thankful for all of you. Um, I'm thankful for having uh, this job and the opportunity to teach you guys um, Stats 102A, uh, I, teaching you guys R and computational statistics, uh, which as silly as it may seem is, you know, something that, that I enjoy teaching. And, and so I hope you've enjoyed uh, the class as well. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and I hope, uh, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving holiday and a great weekend. Uh, whether you guys are going back home to, uh, to spend it uh, with your family or if you will stay uh, out here, you know, maybe distant from your family. But I, I do hope you enjoy the, uh, the company of, of, uh, of other people and uh, also, um, you know, get some rest and catch up on probably some much needed sleep and... Uh, recover and uh, and all of that and we'll finish out our quarter uh nice and strong here so um anyway thank you guys for for, for being here and thank you for uh giving me uh, or for enrolling in my class so that i can have what i consider my dream job of teaching statistics um okay so today uh, we will take a look at, um, I posted this uh, document uh, on simulating blackjack, okay? Uh, this is taken from a, from a book on uh, case studies in data science, and this is, uh, this is a very good, um, what I consider a, a good exploration of simulation, written by our favorite, Hadley Wickham. Uh, he wrote this uh, as a way to uh, kind of just explore some questions that we might have about um, blackjack, okay? So uh, I always feel like I'm doing a little bit of uh, mansplaining here when I'm explaining some of these things, but um, just, just so we're all familiar with how uh, the game blackjack works, it's um, you know it's a card game that we play in uh, casinos. It's a gambling game, and uh, most of the games in the casino are all designed so that the casino maintains an edge, um, you know, via probability and using the law law of large numbers. They always kind of end up winning in the end. Um, but blackjack is one of the games that's known uh, to have a tiny bit of a of an exploit that people can um, use to their advantage. And that is that in, in most games of, in the casino, the games are all independent. Every time you spin the wheel on roulette, the outcome has nothing to do with previous games. Okay, same thing with craps. What happens in the next game has nothing to do with what ha has happened in the past. However, blackjack's a little bit different because they use a shoe, which is a basically a bunch of decks together. They, they might have a stack of six decks, maybe more or maybe fewer. And they do not shuffle the decks every single after every single game. And what this does then is that the cards that are dealt in the future depend on the cards that were dealt in the past. So in... Um, if, uh, if desirable cards have already been dealt, then that means what remains in the deck will be less desirable cards. On the other hand, if a bunch of less desirable cards have already been dealt, then um, that means the cards that remain in the deck or the shoe will be more desirable. And therefore, as a player, you may choose to increment, increase your bet because now that the 
deck is, quote, saturated with good cards, uh, you are now more likely to, to win, okay? And that's kind of the, the basic premise behind card counting in, in blackjack. Uh, card counting is not illegal. It's not encouraged, but, you know, as long as you're doing it only in your head and not using any kind of device to assist you, you are technically allowed to count cards and and generally this means um, you know you try to keep track of what remains in the deck and if what remains in the deck is favorable you would increase your bet and thereby hope to increase your winnings now if the casino suspects that you are doing this they may ask you to stop playing at their casino um, and whatnot but um, but that's what uh, that's how it goes uh, the basic game of blackjack is that you are dealt two cards, the dealer is dealt two cards, and the dealer also shows one of their cards. Okay, So you have um, knowledge of your two cards, and you have incomplete knowledge of what the dealer has. And um, the goal is to get the total of your cards to as close to 21, to 21 or as close to it as possible without going over. And, and your basic moves are to hit, which means you draw another card from the deck, and that will increase your points total. Or you can stand, which means, um, you know, I'm happy with the, the points that I have, and, you know, I will submit this to face off against the, uh, the points that the dealer has. Uh, the dealer has no choice in whether to hit or stand. The rules for the dealer is that if the point total of the dealer's cards is less than 17, so 16 or under, the dealer must take on more cards until their point total is 17 or higher. And if that forces the dealer to take a card that causes them to go over 21, then, then you win. Um, otherwise, um, you know, you, you, you face off your hand versus the dealer's hand and, uh, and, and kind of check it there. If, um, so, uh, so you can get 21 points by, you know, you get maybe you get dealt a 5, a 6, and a 10, and that would be worth 21. Um, the best way to get 21 is with an ace or a 10. The ace is worth 11 points or it's worth 1 point, and if you have an ace and a 10, that's considered blackjack, and so the ace-10 add up to 21, but if you have a blackjack with an ace-10, then um, that beats other all other hands. So a 5-6-10 will lose to an ace-10. Um, that, that's just the, uh, the rules, and, and generally casinos will pay one and a half towards uh, an ace-10 uh, dealing, okay? So... So if you generally you bet um, like you bet some money, you bet ten dollars on a hand and you get even money. So if you get if you bet ten dollars and you win, then you get to keep your original bet and the casino will give you um, ten dollars. If you bet ten dollars and you lose, the casino just takes that ten dollars you bet. And if you and the dealer tie, then the ten dollars you bet just goes back to you, but you don't take any additional money or or lose any money there. Question. The ace is considered a 1 or an 11, whichever is to your favor, okay? So if you're dealt an ace 10, then the ace will be dealt worth 11, and you're, you have 21. Um, if you, however, um, if you foolishly ask for another card, like if you had an ace 10, and you say, hit me, and they deal you a 3, uh, 11 plus 10 plus 3 would be worth 14, and, I mean 24, and, and that would mean a bust, so that ace now becomes only worth one point, and you have a one, ten, three, and you you now have fourteen points. Okay. Um, so it, you know there's there's all sorts of rules. Um, the general, the simple strategy for playing um, for playing blackjack is that uh, if if the dealer shows any card that is a seven or higher, a seven, eight, nine, ten, or ace, the, um, and your card total is 16 or less, you should hit, 
Okay, that's like the only time you should hit. Otherwise, you would stand. So if you have 15 points, like if you have a 10-5, you have 15 points in your hand, and the dealer shows uh, a 6, okay? Then the strategy there, the simple strategy would say you stand. So you take your 15 points, you go up against the dealer. The dealer has a 6. Maybe the dealer has a 10, which is worth 16 points. However, because the dealer has no choice but to hit if they have anything less than 17, they might have to hit and they might be dealt an eight and now their thing is 24, they've gone over 21 and they lose, okay? Um, oh, and I'm sorry, uh, as far as the deck goes, all the, uh, the cards are worth their face value and the jack, queen, and king are all considered tens, okay? So there are um, 16 cards in the deck that are worth 10. That's the 10, the jack, the queen, and the king. So, uh, and four suits, so 16 cards that are worth 10, and then, and, uh, and then the aces are worth 1 or 11. So the desirable cards are the 10s and the aces, and then the undesirable cards would be the 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then uh, everything else, the 7, 8, and 9, are con considered kind of neutral. Okay. All right, so we will, um, we will take a look at... Uh, some code that uh, that Hadley has written up in terms of how we can simulate blackjack. Now this is the the chapter is about 30 pages long, and so uh, we're going to have to kind of fly through this, and I'm going to have to skip over certain sections of it. Um, but I do encourage you uh, at at some point to uh, to read through the the document because it it is, in my opinion, uh, very well written and uh, does a very good job of explaining how you can think about uh, writing some code and writing in a way that you can test it to make sure that it's functioning properly and then uh, and, and slowly increasing the complexity of the code to, uh, to handle um, kind of the entirely uh, complex nature that we are, we are trying to, uh, to simulate here. Uh, so in the beginning, we will start by uh, building a deck, okay? And so if we ask what is our deck, our deck is, uh, this will be the, the one, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, okay? And we repeat that four times, so we have ace through king uh, represented in our deck of 52 cards. And if we shuffle the decks, then uh, this will be a function that just takes the, uh, the deck, and, uh, and we can just call shuffle decks, um, and this will uh, just take our 52 cards and mix them up. Okay. Here's a function that will take a vector of cards and calculate how much that uh, hand is worth, hand value. So, the basic value is just going to be the sum of the cards, okay? But we implement a few rules, which is if, uh, if we have an ace, if any of the cards are an ace, and the total value of the cards is under 11, 11 or less, we can safely add 10 points to the value that we can convert one of those aces to an, ele um, to an 11, and that will be our hand value. So we will do value to value plus 10, okay? And then if our uh, value goes over 21, then we have bust, so our hand will effectively lose in all cases, so our hand is worth zero. And on the other hand, if we have blackjack, meaning we have a value of 21 and we've achieved this using only two cards, then our hand value is uh, gonna be worth more. It, it, to indicate that we beat other hands of 21, we'll call this 21 and a half. Otherwise, just return the value. Okay, so here's the hand value function, and, um, and that's what we have. Here is a winnings function, which is to say, you know, how, how much do we win? This will either return uh, 1, 0, negative 1. Uh, it could also return 1.5 if we win via blackjack. So it's just going to be kind of uh, what we win. Um, 
you know, in terms of our bet, okay? So if the dealer has blackjack, then we will lose pretty much no matter what, unless we also have blackjack. So we have players less than or equal to 21. So this is going to be, uh, this is a true-false statement, which gets coerced to a 1. And, uh, and this will be uh, true for any hand other than blackjack. If it's blackjack, this is coerced to a 0. And so our winnings will be 0. That means we tied. And, uh, and, and we can kind of check through all of these things. And this will return whether uh, we win or not. So if the, uh, if the dealer busts, then, then we would win. In almost every circumstance, if we have blackjack, we would win one and a half. However, if we bust, we would also get, uh, we would lose. Okay. And then if, um, if the dealer has anything else, then we would win if we have blackjack or win if our hand is worth more than the dealer's hand, and we would lose if our hand is worth less than the dealer's hand. Uh, I'll kind of just go through this quickly. These are just some test cases, and we can just see, you know, like, does our hand value function work um, in terms of calculating the value of our hand? So here's, if I'm dealt an ace 10, my hand value would be worth 21 and a half. If I'm dealt a 5, a 3, and a 10, then it calculates 18. If I'm dealt a, you know, a 1, 2, an ace and a 2, then it'll be worth 13 and so on and so forth. And if I'm dealt a 1, 2 and I decide to hit uh, and I get dealt a 10, then it takes into account and says, okay, this is can't be worth 11. It's going to just be worth um, 1, okay? And, uh, and this test cards list just is a list of a bunch of different possible hands, and these are the kind of the the values that we expect them to be, and we can just make sure do um, if we apply the test uh, the hand value function to our list of test cards, does the uh, the values that we get do those match the values that we expect? And indeed, they they match. Okay, here's um, and I'm going through this quickly, but this is just to make sure that our winnings function works. Okay, and so, whoops, this is, if we apply the winnings function to, you know, what happens if our hand busts and is worth zero versus, uh, you know, we have 20, um, you know, the dealer has, you know, any of these outcomes, what happens in our winnings, and in all of these cases, you know, we either might win or we might lose. And so um, this is just a methodical way to go through every single scenario to make sure that the functions for winnings is calculating what we win correctly, whether we uh, come out ahead or behind. OK? And so, uh, so we can do that. Uh, in the beginning, we will start with a function for drawing a card from the deck called shoe. This is a call to draw a card from the shoe. And in the beginning, our shoe function will just be draw uh, a random card from the deck. So here we got delta 2, here we got delta 10, there we got delta 9. Okay, And this is just drawing sampling from the deck uh, with replacement. So this is just drawing a truly random card. And uh, later on, we will update the shoe to uh, be able to keep track of the cards that we have dealt out. Okay, but this is just to make sure that our our hands are are working correctly. We're going to build a function um, that will create a new hand, and and in the beginning, it's just going to return a list, which is our bet, the shoe, which is how we're going to draw, draw cards, and the cards themselves. And what we will do is we will wrap this inside structure for class equals hand. So we're using some S3 object-oriented programming so that when we do call new hand, this will return um, this will return a new hand. Okay. So let's. So here, uh, my cards is a new hand, and uh, and it returns. Uh, our bet, which is worth four dollars, 
it also includes the function for drawing new cards and it includes the cards themselves um, and says the attribute is hands. What, what we will do is to make um, our life a little bit easier is we're going to create our own custom S3 print method for print.hand and this will paste out the cards that we have which is a 9 and an ace and it will calculate the hand value for us and, uh, and also print out the bet that we have. So once I create my custom print method, when I call uh, my cards rather than returning the list that we have here, it says you have a nine and an ace, which is worth 20 points, and your current bet is four. Okay, so this just makes the, the printing um, a little bit easier for us. And now we will implement uh, functions for um, what to do, okay? So the choices that we have are to either hit our cards or hit our hand, which we will take our hand and we will update the cards in our hand to um, the current cards that we have plus uh, drawing from the shoe an additional card. Okay, And if we want to um, update our hand, we would have to we would have to write something like this. We would have to write um, our hand will be um, hit uh, my cards, and then therefore the output of this will be, um, you know, I had the 9 1, which was worth 20 points. I foolishly chose to hit them, and so now I, and I got delta 6, and so now my cards are worth 16. Okay? Um, but you know, here I updated, I captured the output to hand, hand again, my, my original things as cards. So probably we would write my cards is the output of this, but, um, but we'll, just, we'll just leave it like that. The, um, the function uh, stand just takes our, our hand and, uh, and returns it. So if I do stand, so again, my cards, this is the original hand that I've been dealt. And if I just do stand on my cards, it doesn't do anything. Um, it just returns the exact hand that I have. But, but that's fine, OK? Now um, we can double down. So these are other terminologies that we have in Blackjack. So we can double down. Double down means um, you're going to hit one more time and you get to double your bet. So this, this you do this when um, if you're dealt something like uh, a 5-6, so your cards are worth 11, and you think, I'm going to get dealt a 10 or something like that. So then you double down, and, then, um, and so you double your bet. So if you currently bet $4, then you double it, and now you've bet $8, and you're hoping to win big. Okay. So this is uh, doubling down. So what we do is we uh, increment our bet by just multiplying it by 2. We update our hand by hitting the hand, and then we stand, which will return the current hand that we have. Okay, And so, again, if I take a look at my current hand, my cards, I've got a blackjack hand worth 20. And if I double down, we can see uh, I get dealt another card. Now I'm, I have 19 points and my bet has doubled to an 8. Another option that you can do in blackjack, and this is just kind of complicating things more, is you can split a, a pair. So if you are dealt, let's say you're dealt two 8s, okay? And so your hand total is worth 16, which is generally considered like the worst hand you can have in blackjack. Um, what you, you have the option of taking your two eights and splitting them, and now you will have two hands that you're playing. You got an eight, you'll take another card over here, you'll take this eight, and you'll take another card over here, and, um, and now you have two hands in play on the table. Uh, and so this is done by returning a list, and the list consists of two new hands where the cards consist of the first hand plus an additional card, and the second hand plus an additional card, and the bet is our current bet. So you have to, if you bet $4 and you got dealt two eights, 
then you would split those two eights and you'd have to bet another four dollars over here. So you have two hands and you know one might win, one might lose, or or both might win or both might lose or something like that. Okay. So that's a split pair. And here we're not the casino would only let you do this if you have a pair, but our function doesn't even bother checking for that. We can just apply split pair to this, and the nine will go into one hand, and the one will go into the other hand. So what we've done is we've taken the nine one, and one nine went into the first hand, the other one, the ace went into the other hand. We coincidentally got dealt another ace, and over here we got dealt a three. Okay, so now we have two hands in play. Uh, and that's what we have. So we can um, we can just kind of see. Right now, the dealer's showing a five. Our hand is um, fifteen, six, nine, and fifteen. And so maybe we will choose to hit. Uh, we got delta one and sixteen. Maybe we'll choose to stay. <coughs> the dealer has ten. We, the dealer will hit. The dealer got dealt another 10, so they got 20. And so the dealer has 20, we have 16, we're gonna lose. If we check the winnings, it says we lose, okay? Our winnings are negative one. We can kind of automate the dealing, uh, the cards that the dealer will draw by saying, first of all, we will draw um, two cards for the dealer, oops. Um, okay, two cards for the dealer, and if the value is under 17 and they haven't bust, then draw another card. So here, they start off with 10-3, they said we got to draw again, now they got a 10, so now they have 23, they bust, so they stop. And we can just kind of see how this works, 2, 7, they got 9, they got 10, now they stop at 19. Here they just keep drawing, 2 and a 4 is worth 6, 6 and 8 is 14. They have to keep drawing, and they drew a 10 and they bust. Uh, here they got um, 20, so they stop. Here they got 23, here they got 20, so they stop, and, and so on and so forth. So this is, a, this is just a function so that the dealer ends up having cards. And here we can say, um, we can implement a function for some simple strategy, which is, what cards do I have, and what is the dealer's face-up card? If, um, if my cards have bust, if, then I, I will stay. On the other hand, if the, uh, the dealer has a face-up card of seven or more, and my card values are 16 or under, then I will hit. In, other, in all other cases, I will stand. So this is just a simple strategy, and we can say, all right, what do I do? Strategy simple, what do I do if I have um, an ace-10, so that's blackjack, and the dealer's face-up card is an eight, okay? We will stay. What do I do if I have um, 15, 5, 10, and the dealer's face-up card is an eight. Well, then we would hit, okay? That's the simplest strategy. If you don't know how to play blackjack, then what you will, that will be the strategy you should use. It's, it's basically always stay, the only exception for when you hit with the simple strategy is if the dealer's card is um, seven or more, so seven, eight, nine, 10, or ace, and your hand is less than 17, so 16 or under. That's the only time you should hit. Otherwise, you should stay in all cases. So even so, if you, even though you have less than 16, if the dealer's showing a three, so here we got, uh, if I have 5, 10, and the dealer shows a three, then we should stay, okay? Even if we have like a, uh, something miserable like a seven, and the dealer shows a three, we would stay in that case, all right? So, so that's the strategy simple. And um, in here, we will uh, write a function called play hand. Play hand will be, takes in several arguments. 
Shoe, which is how we're going to draw new cards. Strategy, which is how we're going to decide whether to hit or stay. Um, our hand, which is um, the, the hand that we're drawing. And the dealer, which will be uh, using the uh, dealer cards function for drawing, um, to decide what cards the dealer has. And we will set, uh, verbose will be the option to tell us um, if it's doing, doing something, okay? And so uh, the card that, the face up card will be uh, the first card in the dealer's hands, okay? So when you call this function, it's gonna use new hand to create a new hand and it will draw cards for the dealer, for, uh, for dealer. And uh, the face up card will be the, uh, the first card in the dealer's hand. And then our action will be to apply the strategy, whether to hit or stand here. And that depends on our cards and the dealer's face up card, right? And so here um, it will say, you know, what do we do if we, um, if it says to stand or to hit, and it, and it implements those things. So it says, uh, if we hit, then uh, we will update our hand by hitting the hand. Um, or if it says to double down, we will update our hand. Uh, uh, else, uh, otherwise, okay. And at the very end, it returns the winnings of um, between the dealer's hands and and our hand. Okay, so it returns the winnings. So this function will just play play out the the hand and return what it returns is whether we won or whether we lost the verbose stuff will kind of tell uh, exactly what has happened okay the dealers cards and our cards and the actions and all of that and uh, and so that's what we have here um, so actually I'm gonna write this here this implements uh, the the split and so it it goes into a little bit more um, stuff here, um, but let's let's just kind of see what happens. So we will just play a the uh, the thing here. Okay. So here um, the dealer was dealt a five five. So the face up card is a five. Okay. The dealer starts off with ten, so they choose to hit. They got sixteen and they choose to hit again they got delta 9 so they're at 25 so their hand they've bust their hand is zero okay meanwhile we were dealt to blackjack so we stay our final hand is uh, 110 or ace 10 which is worth 21 and a half and our winnings is 1.5 okay if i call this again uh here the dealer had de been dealt uh, a 10-3, so their face-up card is a 10, okay, um, and uh, and so they're 13, they, they draw another card of 10, they bust, okay? We don't know that yet, so uh, their face-up card is a 10, we start off with the 2-7, we are worth 9 points, um, and so we choose to hit, we get dealt a 10, our hands are our hand is worth 19. 19 beats the zero. We win. Okay. Here the dealer starts off with a two four. Their face up card is a two. We have eight four, which is only worth 12 points. But if we compare our eight four, which is worth 12 points, and we see the face up card of two, our choice there is to stay. So we stay. Okay. Meanwhile, the dealer. Starts off with two four. They have six. They hit. They get eight uh, an eight. So they are fourteen. They choose to hit again, and they bust. Okay. So um, effectively, that's what you're hoping for. Is that if the dealer has anything showing anything less than a seven, you're hoping that they're going to be forced to continue hitting until they bust. And in that case, that's what happened. Uh, over here, if if we keep playing, the dealer had. An 810, okay, so they're worth 18, they stay. We have a 310, okay, so we are worth 13 points. We see the dealer's 8, so we choose to hit, okay, because that's the only time we hit, right? And, uh, and so we get drawn a 10, then we stay because we bust, and so our hand is worth 0, so we lose, okay? And this is a situation where we would have lost whether we chose to hit or stay because they have 18 when we were dealt 13. 
At 13, we would lose if we choose to hit. We bust and we lost, okay? So anyway, this is uh, with verbose set to true. The default is verbose set to false, okay? And it just returns negative 1, 1, 0, or, or whatever. And so then I can do, you know, replicate this, you know, 50 times. And we get uh, a bunch of outputs, okay? Which is just the winnings, and we can just say, you know what, let's see what, what, what is the mean of my winnings of 50 games, and it says, okay, you came out, those 50 games, you, you lost some, these 50 games, we, we won some, so on and so forth, okay? And so here we can get kind of just implementing our simple strategy, we can see uh, kind of the, the average winnings that we get if we play uh, 50 games. Uh, for the optimal strategy, we have, um, there's a table on Wikipedia that just shows you what the optimal move is, okay? So our simple strategy was basically if we are, uh, we stay almost in every circumstance except for when the dealer shows um, something seven or higher and, uh, and we have something under 16 total, okay? The optimal strategy includes um, when you should uh, double down, uh, when you should split your cards and things like that, and it includes all of these things for soft totals and hard totals. A soft total means one of your cards is an ace, and, and so maybe uh, like an ace six is worth 17 points, but if you were dealt um, like a, a seven, Okay, 17 and 7 normally would cause you to bust at 24. However, because the ace can also change to a 1, if you were dealt, if you have an ace 7 and you were dealt a 7, then, um, then now it becomes a 1, 7, 7 and you have 15 points. So the risk for um, betting or for, uh, for hitting on an ace 7 is, uh, is reduced, or ace 6 is reduced, so, so the, the strategy is a little bit different, okay? So, so those are considered soft totals, and we've got hard totals, and what happens when you have pairs, and, and whatnot. And we can implement the strategy by uh, creating a lookup table, okay, and, um, and using the optimal strategy, we can say, all right, what do we do if we are dealt a four, an ace, and a six, right? A four, an ace, and a six is wor worth 21 points. Four, ace and six would be uh, 21. And if the dealer shows a three, what do we do? We should stand, okay? However, if, what if we're dealt a three, two, and a six? A three, two, and a six is worth 11, and the dealer shows um, a, th uh, a three, we should hit. If we're dealt a five, six, and the dealer shows a three, then, uh, then we should double down, okay? So these are all kinds of just different things, right? If we have 11, and the dealer shows a three, then we should double down if we're allowed. Um, otherwise, uh, over here, you know, this is 11 and a three, and, uh, and we chose choose to hit because um, generally you're only allowed to double down after your initial two cards. Generally, if you hit once, you can't double down after that. So, so anyway, this, this all implements all of this, and this is uh, just a... Um, a bunch of cases to just make sure that the strategy optimal is working uh, the way it is. And I think there's purposely a mistake here to just kind of show how uh, this will catch any kind of um, mistakes in the code. But um, so I think if we run this, it will say 61516 is equals H is not true. So this is, we have, uh, what is this? 6151, that's uh, a hard 13. A hard 13 and the dealer shows a 6. A hard 13 and the dealer shows a 6 should actually be a stay, okay, according to our lookup table. So, um, so this one should be this, and if we do that, I think uh, it works out. Okay, so that, that works out. Anyway, so if we run this, we can just see, you know, what happens if we play the... Uh, optimal strategy and if we have uh, you know verbose we can see exactly what happens this 
Um, you know, we play it this way, and either you know we want. In this case, we um, uh, we doubled down. Okay, so we win two. So we had a nine. The dealer showed a three. So in this, so we have a nine. The dealer shows a three. So this is a case where we double down. And so our first win is our first earnings is uh, winnings of two. Then we lose, and then we come out ahead. So that implements kind of the optimal strategy there. Okay, so what we'll do is we will play um, a thousand games implementing the optimal strategy, and then we'll play a thousand games playing the uh, the simple strategy, and we can just create um, a comparison between these two things. Okay, and what we see. The purple is the uh, the simple strategy, and we generally either win or we lose. Sometimes we tie. Okay, uh, with the optimal strategy, where we're allowed to double down and allowed to split. Sometimes we win two, and sometimes we win negative two. So in these cases, and then <laughs> it's even possible to win three if you um, split your hand, and I don't know, you win. Um, blackjack on both of them or something like that okay but uh, so we see also a little bit of uh, winnings at two and a peak at negative two and things like that and anyway we can just kind of see the mean of the winnings I don't know what, what just happened there okay mean of the winnings and the mean of using the optimal strategy is we only lose about three cents on the dollar, and with the simple strategy, we're losing about six cents on the dollar after about a thousand games of this. Here is a, a function for calculating payoffs. Okay, the payoff is basically you know what is the uh, the mean winnings and and all of that. And here, rather than talking about what would happen if you play a thousand games at the casino, this is. What would happen if you play 50 games at the casino, but you make a thousand trips to the casino? Okay, so it's a little bit different. What if you make a thousand trips to the casino, where each time you go to the casino, you play 50 games, and we can just kind of compare. So this takes a lot, a long time to run, and um, and we can just kind of see what happens there. Uh, all right, so uh, win simple. This is just kind of all of this stuff, and here we will um, we'll just kind of create a, a quick plot here. Okay, and so this is kind of a like a histogram, but it's called a frequency poly. And we see with the uh, the optimal strategy, um, we generally come out a little bit more ahead than with the simple strategy. Um, over our thousand different trips to the casino where we've played 50 games each. Okay, let me let me skip ahead. And here we're going to implement a reference class for the shoe. So so far we've been just dealing with a purely random shoe. Now we have a shoe that has a vector of cards to uh, to show us how to uh, how to keep track of the cards that have have been dealt, okay? And the way we will um, we'll do this, so here, let me create a new shoe. This is going to consist of uh, six decks here. Okay, so here is uh, my shoe with six decks. So I have 312 cards, and it starts off, you know, this is the arrangement of all 312 cards, and so you know there's some streaks of different different values, and we start off by at position zero. And if I call um, my underscore shoe, and I do um, draw, let's say draw two cards, the first two cards that will be drawn will be three nine, okay? And then as I continue to draw cards, we can see that they just come from this index of cards here. So the first two cards are 3, 9. The next two cards are 10, 8. I draw two more cards, 9, 10. Okay? The, the shoe also can draw um, tell us which cards have been played. And, and so far, this 
well, the cards that have been played are a 3, 9, a 10, 8, and a 9, 10. Okay? And so by setting up the reference class, and uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going over the code for the reference class, but we can see just from the effects of, of creating this, we can see that um, the cards are all written out here, and we can keep track of the cards that have been played. So as, as I draw more cards, we can see what has happened, and if I call what cards have been played so far now, it's you know, 3, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10, and then uh, the 10, 9, the 6, and the 10. So it all has that. Okay? So now I'm able to keep track of what cards have played versus before where I, I did not use a reference class for the shoe. This will come in handy for as far as running a count. So count systems for blackjack generally say that the ace and the 10 are desirable cards, whereas the two through six are non-desirable cards, and the seven, eight, nine, those are considered neutral. And so the way the card counting system works is that if an undesirable card plays, two, two through six play, then you increase the count, meaning what remains to be played, um, there are more desirable cards remaining in, in the shoe. Okay? But as aces and tens are played, that decreases the count for what remains. And so you have uh, you know, fewer desirable cards left in the shoe. And so the idea being, um, if there's some streak where a bunch of junk cards have come out, okay, a whole bunch of twos and through sixes have been played, then you know that what remains in the deck is, is, should be saturated of great cards for you. And so you would increase your bet. And so this is written using this high-low function, okay? And so here we say, you know, if it's a, an ace, the one, it's, our count goes down by one, or if it's a 10, our count goes down by one. If it's two through six, the count goes up by one and so on and so forth. So if we look at the cards that have been played, which are these cards, and if I throw that into my high-low function, we can see the, the count. So, so far the count is at negative two. So when the three is played, our count goes up by one. The nine does not affect our count. The 10 decreases our count, so our count is back to zero. The eight doesn't affect it, so we're at, still at zero, zero. The 10 decreases the count, so we're at negative one. Here's another 10, so we're at negative two. The nine doesn't affect it, so we're still at negative two. The six improves our count, so we're at negative one, but then the 10 decreases our count, so we're at negative two. So the count after all of these cards have been played is at negative two. If I draw two more cards, or let's just draw one more card. So here I've drawn a two, which means the cards that have been played now have this. So what would my count be? My count would now be negative one because an undesirable card has, has shown. Okay, So this allows us to kind of determine a count of the cards that remain in the deck. And so uh, when we do that, we can now bet, change our bet. Okay, And so our bet will be basically based on the count. If the count is negative, undesirable, then we will just bet the minimum. If the, if the count goes up and up and up, then uh, we will increase our count. So this is just, you know, we'll, we'll kind of skip over this. Okay. And so the, um, the payoff now will be um, a matter, we will just play the usual way, but then we can say the, the bet that, uh, the payoff that I would get would either be um, my gains just totaled up, which is if I use the same bet every single time, or I can say, you know what, let's say I changed my bet with each um, as my counts changed. And so we can multiply our gain times the bet, and this would be uh, how this, this comes out. Okay, so here we will just uh, play a thousand games, and we will keep track of the count and see how this uh, affects it. And um, It's running. <laughs> okay, so this is a thousand games, or a thousand visits to the casino. Each visit to the casino, we're playing 50 games, 
and all of this. Um, and if we take a look at uh, the payoffs, this is what we have. And if we uh, take a look here, um, with the uh, standard betting, I actually got some, got lucky and I came out a bit ahead. And if I increased my bet using the count counting method, um, my payoff is actually even even greater at 1.2. If we look at the standard deviations, however, we see that, and, and this makes sense, the standard deviations of our winnings is even much greater if we're affecting our bets, right? If you're, effect, you're betting a lot more or a lot less, then uh, the standard deviations of your winnings is gonna, gonna uh, be different, okay? And, uh, and anyway, we can create plots of all of this of how how this goes and and basically this shows that you know for for much of it there's not much of a difference between um, counting and, and not counting but in some cases you do come out ahead uh, by counting cards and uh, and and we have seen that with our our results there all right we'll uh, we'll wrap up here uh, and again I encourage you guys to uh, to read through this chapter it is um, it's very well written and shows, I think, some very good logical thinking in implementing a, a fairly complex simulation um, in, uh, in code here. Okay, I hope you guys have a great uh, weekend. Have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll see you guys on Monday.